Hi, welcome back to Chris Dyer's Creative Friends, the super awesome YouTube podcast show where me, your artist friend Chris Dyer, talks to his super awesome creative friends. Now, this afternoon, I'm in beautiful Lima, Peru. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon. I met up with my artist friend, Andrea Vigil, a.k.a. Side Conscious. We already went out to get some delicious vegan lunch, and then we went skateboarding around the Malecon. We had a nice sweat. It was awesome. It was fun. We're pumped, and we're ready to have an awesome conversation. Como estas, Andrea? How are you doing? I'm very good. I'm Woo! very excited for, for this interview. Awesome. Well, thank you, and thank you for doing it in uh, English, despite uh, it being your second language. Um, so we met earlier this year, or earlier last year, 2020, on, on Instagram. Uh, I think we were, had friends in common. And then later, we were both part of the uh, Zoom uh, uh, jams of Facebook called Espiritus Visionarios <laughs> that our mutual friend Boris Quinteros uh, in Tarapoto was organizing. And I was a host, and you were one of the guest live painters. And that was super fun. Did you, did you have fun in yeah. those jams? I loved it. I love to meet all, all the other artists. I don't know, we were like in, I think, in quarantine, so it was awesome to share some art, to share some expression, yes. Yeah, it's super crucial to have those virtual hangout, you know, art jams to keep us sane when we're all locked up in quarantine. You know? And it was great that that was a very specific Peruvian or Latino jungle shamanic crew that uh, we were doing uh, and what happened Spanish happened English it was, it was very awesome. like unique and it was great to have you and I always thought you were interesting because you're a good connection between uh, Peruvian shamanic jungle art but you're from Lima and you do what people would call visionary art I'm also kind of like that bridge you know like being half Canadian being in the visionary scene but also being Peruvian so uh, I don't know any other Limeño visionary artists. Do you? Are, are there lots of yours, or what's up? No, not so many. I I know some of my friends, some of them, but really it's not like the the thing, you know. Mostly art um, is like aesthetic, but not so visionary in that sense. Right, but there is lots of spiritual art, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Most of them, I think they live like in Pucallpa or in Tarapoto, but in Lima, there are a few of them only. Right, like when, when people think of visionary Peruvian art, it's the classic Palo Amaringo, Ayahuasca style, jungle artist, but not so much the Lima. That's why I thought it was interesting that you were doing it and I really want to learn more about it uh, through you. So, tell me, uh, you're from Lima. I, I, I believe you grew up in La Molina and now you're living in Miraflores. How do you like living in Miraflores? I like it a lot too. I love, I love to be near the ocean. I really love the ocean and nature. So it's really cool to, to have it next to me, to enjoy like the sunsets mm -hmm. every afternoon. And also I'm very close to everything. Oh, this is like the, the big city. Right, so, the galleries, the restaurants, the, the also, scene is more in this neighborhood. Yes, and also for for skateboarding and all that, it's really cool here. Right. Yes, I'm enjoying it a lot. Nice, that's awesome. If I lived in Lima, I think I would live in Miraflores. And yeah, it's, uh, I went to school here as a kid, so this was my neighborhood when I was in my teens. Um, what, what school did you go to? First, I went to Via Maria School, like a Catholic school. Catholic school, Reina de los Angeles, and I finished my studies there. How, how was it? Not how, how was it going to school with all these nuns? 
Oh my god, that's a hard question, but I don't know. I think I enjoy it, but at the same time not. So a lot of rules, a lot of like discipline and stuff. So I never felt like I really fit in. Right. Yeah. Was it like spiritual? Since like, you know, nuns and Catholic upbringing is supposed to be a spiritual situation, but was it? It was spiritual in, in lots of sense, but at the same time it was like positive, you know, like you didn't have the chance to question about it, you know, like you, you only had to believe it. So that that was the part that I really didn't like because I had a lot of doubts, especially when, when I was a teenager. So like when I ask questions and, or I start just questioning myself, I never find the answers that I was looking for. Right, because mm -hmm. you can't, you know, as you say, you can't make questions about spirituality. If it's kind of like, or like religion already defined it. No, it's this way. You got to believe in this. There's no, nothing to look anymore. We, we, wrote, we wrote it down for you. Now you just got to believe this and that's exactly. how you'll get to heaven. Yeah, that's the problem with religion, right? And faith and dogma and all that stuff. After uh, high school, where did you go to university? Did you go to like art school or what did you learn? No, uh, at the beginning, well, I wanted to be an artist, but well, my family said it wasn't a good, a good idea. So I first studied like com communication science in the University of Lima. And I liked, I, I like it a lot, but then when I start having these courses of like I don't know, marketing, publicity, owner. I start figuring out how the system worked. Like, I really start to, I don't know. <laughs> I had like an ex ex existential crisis. So I start questioning myself what I, I wanted to be or become. And I really wanted to make this world a better place to live, help people, that was, was the answer. So. Then I really enjoyed a lot of like um, courses like uh, philosophy or theory of knowledge. I was really interested in, the, in those matters. So I thought it was a good idea to change my career. So from one day to another, I just decided to, to pick cycle. And I studied psychology for six years. And it was amazing. I, I really liked it. I learned a lot from it. And when I was like 18 years old, I just figured out like magical, like magically I could paint. Like I don't know, I, when I was bored uh, in like uh, lectures in the class, I used to like just draw. And uh, then suddenly, from one day to another, I said, I think it's a good idea to, I don't know, to make a mural. But I didn't even knew what was a mural. I just wanted to paint a wall in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So I had like uh, some old shelves that I just picked up, I painted the wall like um, just white and I started drawing and then from one, all of a sudden I made a mural and I said okay, like what is this, like I can paint and it was very natural to me, painting was like pure expression just flowing with myself and and then, well, I, there in the university was like a um, like, um, kind of workshop of art. So I wanted to like paint a, a dragon. I remember in those days I used to dream a lot of, about a, like a purple dragon. Mm -hmm. And the, I don't know, the professor said, no way, like you don't know how to paint. So you have to make this, I don't know, this, this uh, how to say, boy gone. Yeah, and like a, uh, not a portrait but uh, I, I st I still life yeah still, still life. life and I just wanted to paint the dragon so I told him <laughs> like please can you can you teach me how to dissolve the oils the oil painting and he said, he said okay and he he teach me and I went home and I did it so and it was really like realistic and I say okay what is this no so I started exploring so I'm, I'm a self-thought artist so you went to university, you learned psychology, and then you self-taught yourself how to paint because that's what you were vibing more, but you didn't really stop doing psychology. Does, it, does that have anything to do with the name of your art, Psy Conscious Art? 
like is it like psychologious <laughs> art or what, what's what's the little joke you're trying to throw at us here oh yes for sure it has like everything to do with like my nickname or whatever like yes for me also like i don't know art and psychology had been like together in my life like for all these years so like the the purpose of study of becoming a psychologist the purpose of being an artist was generating consciousness so i think we, they were just together and i just i don't know <laughs> that name popped out in my mind and and i decided to to mix them up to mix them up and a lot of um the content be behind my art some of my paintings has some psychological like theory behind so mm -hmm. so yes so it's kind of like psychological psychedelic yeah <laughs> are you into side trance i kind of like it okay, yes i like nice. it so you got that angle there so do you observe psychology as a way of healing humans yes uh what's your main style of psychology that you prefer uh i'm finishing like uh, my specialization in masters uh, i think yeah it's not a master it's like um diplomado i don't know how to say it yeah i don't know how to say that in english <laughs> <laughs> but uh, specialty diploma yeah it's okay. like three years so i'm in my third year of studying uh gestalt psychology or gestalt and uh, it's, it's what i love to do right now it's amazing I can see how people or my patients heal. I heal through them, through what I'm learning. So it's beautiful. Nice. And do you find your art is also a tool for healing people? Yes, for sure. I really, deep in my heart, that's why I, I really want to. Because what I paint is what I've been learning through life, like my inner learnings uh, some some of these learnings i really didn't want to forget them so i just made a piece of art an, an, an artwork to remember to myself what is important in life so i think maybe that could resonate with other people too mm -hmm. it's like you're making a visualization of the cycle psychological, psychedelic journeys that you're doing in your process of healing and the healing exactly. that you hope to bring other people. Yes. Where, where does psychedelic medicines enter this whole equation? Do you use psychedelics? Yes. And we're very open in this show. We're not <laughs> going to take any to jail. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> well, it seems like the, the, the canvas wants to punish you for using psychedelics. <laughs> it's like, no, it's all good. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. I knew that would happen, yeah. Yeah, it's like a kite. We're on the rooftop. So, back to the question. How does psychedelics enter the, the stage of your healing process uh, in a, as a person and in your uh, desire to heal other people? At the beginning, for example, I tried like weed and it was amazing too. I think it uh, popped up my senses to feel more, to feel myself, to feel nature. Uh, at the beginning I wasn't like conscious of it, but um, I think at the beginning my first approach was through meditation. Like I remember, well I did like a Vipassana retreat where I couldn't speak like for nine days mm -hmm. and I meditated like five hours a day something like that and I remember like I just thought all of my life as I couldn't speak so in one point I just didn't have anything to think about and I went out of the meditation room and it was I, I felt like I was in LSD like I really felt like what is this like and I remember I just, um, I just watched a mountain that was in front of me and the sunset that was there. It was a real mountain or a yeah. mountain inside your head? No, it was a real mountain. I okay. was like in Cienaguilla. Okay, yeah. Like, and, in the countryside uh, of in Lima. In the countryside of Lima, yes. 
and I just start crying because I just realized that wow like I am alive and I just can't appreciate this and I'm and I'm conscious that's it beautiful and from that moment a lot of things of my life change as when the retreat ended like the 10 day you can speak so we were talking about a lot of stuff and and we were talking with the girls about ayahuasca like they were talking about it and i was very curious because at the beginning i was very scared about it and skeptic about it like i read like a thesis and well my psychologist uh, he wasn't my psychologist in those days but he said to me we 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 met and he taught me like hey i think you should try ayahuasca and i said no way like i'm not prepared so mm -hmm. the girls taught me like ayahuasca called you calls you when you are prepared so i just went home and was like magically like that uh, max my psychology called me and told me like hey andrea this weekend is like the last ceremony. I think you should really come and I say, okay. That's how many years ago? That's like nine years ago. Okay. And how old were you at the time? I was 21. 21. Yes, I think 20, 21. And, and well, I went to a ceremony and well, my life changed since that day like I was very purified like I've been meditating like with a special diet in silence so I, I meditated the whole ceremony and I saw a lot of stuff like stuff that it, it, it had passed many years uh, until I could realize what it really was that experience but I also cut with a lot of like programming uh, I don't know thoughts that society give me mm -hmm. and I connected with like the essence of things with love with uh, with the the fact that everything is connected in, in the universe I, 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 I saw a lot of like uh, n nature chains like of, like from the seed to the tree to the fruit to the that was animal. all in your first ceremony yes like to the animals I also went to the the center of the earth it was really really powerful awesome then I also I also I decided to not take ayahuasca for a while and like three years ago uh, I felt that I was prepared again so from like the 2018 I started uh, taking medicine again and I started another process like more personal process and it was amazing I've been like um, learning a lot and since that my art also took like a, a change because I also, as I was like breaking up patterns in myself, I started breaking up patterns in my art that was at the beginning very like rea realistic, like realism. I appreciate a lot of realism and I said, okay, maybe I will take surrealism and, and I just start painting my visions as well. And then I discover, discovered that what I was doing was visionary art. I, w I wasn't really sure what I was doing at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So that first ceremony you did was in Lima area or was it in the jungle? It was in Lima. It was in Lima. Mm -hmm. And then when you went back to doing ceremonies again uh, three years later, you started going to the jungle? At the beginning it was in Lima and in the in New Year of 2019 from 2020, I went to a retreat in a really small village in the middle of the jungle, a town that's called Vencedor that is like nine hours inside the river and there's mm. nothing there. That's in Pucallpa? <laughs> that's in Pucallpa. And that's where you found your maestro, right? Your teacher. Yeah, that's where maestro is from. The first time he came to Lima for the first time in his life was the, f the first ceremony I did ayahuasca. What was his name? Pedro, Pedro Pe Perez. Pedro Perez, mm -hmm. who recently passed, you told me, right? Yes. Yeah, sorry to hear that. And now, how many ceremonies you've done in the last nine years? Eleven ceremonies. Eleven ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Have you done any dietas or...? When we were in the jungle, we, da we I think it was Bovinsana. Bovinsana? I'm not sure, but it was like a 
I, w I couldn't uh, take showers right. and, or uh, use anything. I just uh, was uh, allowed to bath in the river. <laughs> that was amazing. Right. And we had like a diet, but it wasn't a long diet, it was a short one. And also I had to shower with like um, flowers, with a bath of flowers. Yeah, baño de plantas uh -huh. to finish off the yeah. process. Yeah. Yes. I love the baño plantas. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, I love the baño de plantas and I don't really love the dietas, but they're really rewarding and they give you a lot of new uh, insight from the different master plants that uh, the jungle has for us. Like, we're so lucky. We're, we're both from Lima. Uh, we're not from the jungle, but in our backyard, one hour away flight, we have all these gifts and all these medicines and all these healers with thousands of years of tradition. And now we're finding all this rich art to also influence us. So Peruvians and Limeños don't, most of them at least, don't really know how much we have in our own country, yes. sadly enough. So I'm happy that you're a Limeña doing that kind of work. And is there a lot of more Lima people uh, working with the medicine, going to the jungle, getting into these modalities of healing? Some of my friends, it's not like a big thing. I think a lot of people are scared about it and they don't really know the, the therapeutic effects it, it's behind it, you know? Right. Because I think they are opening more um, channels to, to make this visible and also to make a bound between science and spirituality. I, I, I was telling you like earlier that uh, the University of Cayetano, one, one guy is doing like his doctor studies uh, with an uh, investigation about uh, microdosing of ayahuasca and it's called like micro ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are making a lot of studies to, to prove that the, the therapeutic effect of, of ayahuasca and that's really great. Right. That's also, amazing. I think mushrooms are amazing. I, I really do. Like recently, I've been doing mushrooms and I think they are masters too. And it's just um, a way to remember the truth for me. It's like just a way to remember that I am not me. <laughs> like I'm not myself. You're not this thing. <laughs> I am not this. Um, or like this is a expression of yourself but it's not your ultimate self exactly and that i'm not something different from a tree i'm not something different from a flower or from water or from a bird like everything it is connected and i think all those medicines uh, help me to be more in contact with the reality and with my inner reality as well. No, I thought that it was the opposite at the beginning, like that I think some people can do it for, from escaping their reality, but from, for me, or when I do it, I really have an intention to know more about myself and life and the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yeah, well, psychologists in general, are a gift from the gods for us to remember that we are God and that we are oneness and love. And it's so ironic that the world or the system has said, no, these things are evil things that will damage you. Don't let humans remember their ultimate reality. Now, the ironic thing is that Ayahuasca and San Pedro are patrimonies of Peru and they're legal and thousands of people do it in the jungles, yet coastal Limeño city folk are like, hmm, what are these provincial people doing out there in the jungle for thousands of years? That just looks weird. That's probably just drugs. Like, you know, it, it's too bad that we judge them. But so that's great to hear from, you know, the U University of Cayetano that there's already some investigations on microdosing and on the medicines of our country that lots of tourists from around the world are coming to Peru to find their healing and us Peruvians are still doubtful of it. Yeah. Same about the art, like there's never big shows about shamanic jungle art in Lima. Meanwhile, these artists are going around Europe and California and the world and being celebrated by the world and, Lima and Peruvians are just like, eh, I don't know about that weird drug art. <laughs> yes, 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 totally. Why do we, why do, we do that? It's not good. Totally. So, um, 
So tell me a little about, about your art career. So you said you were self-taught. How long have you been doing art and how long have you been doing it as a career, as a means to make your living? Well, I've been painting like more than 10 years ago. But at the beginning, as I was telling you, like I used to make just realist, like realism. I, I, I'm very, how say, exigente. Uh, perfectionist. Perfectionist, and I'm trying to not not to be at the same time. Right. So, well, since 2018, when I traveled to Europe, and I was. I wanted to make this bound between like uh, art and psychology and I start um, learning about art therapy. I also, I don't know, for me going to Europe was amazing because everything was art. I went to Florence, so everything was arts and geometry like everywhere. So I don't know, my brain just popped up. And Florence went, is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And the food. <laughs> yes, I love Italian food. Yeah. I love Italy. Right. And, and also I had a friend that I don't know how he met another friend that had this uh, Bosco Sacro that was like a piece of wood in Florence where they had a teepee where they like uh, like had a big fire and chanting like American native chanting. And that was in Italy? Yeah, in Florence. Oh, like, cool. So I don't know, like. So you end up finding shamanic people in Florida. Yeah, I was like, what? Like, That's it, cool. always when I travel, I don't know what happens, but I find the right path. And then when I came back, I, I took medicine, and that was like the first visionary art piece I made. That is called Numen. That Numen is like, um, it's more like a philosophical term that is like essence, no? That, but the essence that we all share. So it's a, it's a term that then like humanistic psychology took for, for making the idea of the self. So I make, I make this word, word uh, this piece of art and I just didn't stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. I go on and go on and just paint and travel. I, I went to Cosm too, I wanted to. So you got into visionary art yeah. and you went to Cosm, you went to the Vienna <laughs> Visionary Academy. That's awesome. Yes, and I want to, to keep on traveling, meeting artists, doing art seminars, like learning from other artists that are connected and they have the same purpose as me. That's what I really want to do. More like a, an academic art career. I want to go straight to visionary art. Yeah, beautiful. You're one of the first visionary artists I have on this show. I think this might be number 18 or 19 of the podcast series and I'm mostly known as a visionary artist but so far I haven't even had many of my visionary artist friends. What what do you think of visionary art? Do you, do you feel it's like kind of like a movement that's here to help humanity in any way? For sure. I really I really think it, think about it because I know when I uh, when I see like a painting of visionary art uh, as I was telling you I remember something about I don't know deep knowledge something deep about myself, about humanity, about the purpose of life, about important things that I just don't want to forget, you know. I think it's very easy sometimes for me and in the past more of in the past was more easy to to live like automatically, you know, like routines and I don't know. Just do what you always do, what other people do. Go yeah. with the flow of the world. Exactly. That's just, just go with the flow, -like. but I don't know. Um, here and now, I, I, I like and I choose to observe reality, to observe myself, to remember a lot of things to myself, to live in, in harmony with myself and with life and with society and with mm -hmm. all the, the ones I... I feel around. like the world's full of like propaganda and messages about how they want us to think and feel and live. So wherever you go, it's like, you know, advertising for the things you got to buy or, you know, just everything's telling you how you should be. And I feel visionary art is that small little voice being like, hey, we're here to actually evolve into a higher degree of consciousness so we can live as a better humanity. 
you know, we need more reminders like that. Because yes. when we had visionary art where we went, to be like, oh, yeah, fuck, I'm God. And I'm just <laughs> living the physical experience. Let's fucking, like, live in love and <laughs> help each other and, and uh, just enjoy the blessings of being God manifest into the physical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit about you, you know, a little, tell me more about your art career. How long have you been doing it, like, as a way to make money? Uh, since, since 2019. Okay, so just like, like three years ago. Yeah. Three years ago, I decided to, to put mar my energy, like a little bit, like three and a half years ago, when I finally finished my psychology career, because it was really hard. Uh, I start. I really thought that I, I wanted to have more time for creating. So like I took like a room that was in the third floor in my house and make like my art studio and I just start painting, painting, painting. I really like digital artwork too. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when I paint, I have this like the vision really. It's like boom, it pops up in my brain and, and sometimes I don't know, I don't want to forget it and I don't have a pencil or whatever and I just uh, make uh, like digital collage or whatever I don't know with digital art is sometimes for me a little bit uh, faster to manifest what I want when I paint it's more like um, like an inner inner trip <laughs> right it's more of a process it's longer it's a pilgrimage yeah definitely more of a process what do you like better as a final result a painting or a or a digital print a painting for sure. <laughs> right. But sometimes the prints look better because the, the, the computer colors. has no yes. limits. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I've been starting to appreciate digital art more and more and more. And I'm, I'm very sure that I will continue. But I don't know. For me, a painting is very, I don't know how to, how, how to express it in words. It's just move, move something inside. It's of energy. Yes. It's visual energy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's not like there's no energy or life in a digital thing, but since it's done in a computer and it's just a bunch of bits or numbers, when it's printed, it's always a reproduction of something that never really was. Mm -hmm. While the mm -hmm. painting, it's all like something really manifest. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, I always prefer a painting than a digital. Though when I go digital, it's kind of like I can go crazy and it only takes me like a day. Yes. Which is also not that satisfying because when I do something crazy and it only took me like a day, then I'm like, well, that was kind of easy. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Like <laughs> I want to, when I take three months to do a painting and then I'm down just like, Fuck yeah, I finished this painting, I did this. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> you know? But yeah. The same, the same. Right? No no bad vibes to those who do digital paintings, all to each their own, of course. We all got mediums and that's great that we got computers to help us take yes, the visions amazing. further. Um, so what products you do in your career? Like you you're selling products now, I see you got this uh, uh, print and you got your nice top of your art. What other products have you done that you're trying to sell? Like um like this cases, phone, ca phone cases, ta tapestry, um, also prints in like ecological um, paper, like bamboo paper and algae paper, um, also bikinis, also like towels, tops. I don't know. I I wanted to. I wanted people to have it themselves also the art you know for me i don't know clothes are a way to express in yourself so i said okay i would like to have this in my like with me all the time or this day whatever so i start making some some merch like clothes and old stuff and well paintings cases um i want to make um like um agendas also mm -hmm. and i don't know Mm -hmm. are, are, are these things selling well? Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Better yes. than paintings or do paintings sell Yes, also? yes. Recently, th this painting is bought already. Um, the, guy, the, the guy will pick it like next su Saturday. But yes, I think, uh, I don't know, some people don't have a lot of money to buy like a original art piece. And I didn't want it to make my art like elite. No, I wanted to, I don't know, if you really like it, 
whatever, you can have a print that is not so expensive. So I made like different kind of of ac ac accessibility, I don't know, accessible right. products. Yeah, yeah, price points. That's mm -hmm. great that mm -hmm. you can make it that any uh, of your followers can, can buy it. I also saw you got a workshop coming up, right? Yes, yes. Tell me about it. Well, uh, this week I finally figured out that I wanted to to pop up in my in my Instagram also as a psychologist bec because I don't know I had I have this therapeutic role and like more scientific and low profile role as a psychologist and I don't know psychoconscious is more like my artist side but I think I think it's okay I think a lot of people want to heal through art and Art is a powerful tool for, for expressing and healing. So I just, I think, I, I remember I just woke up a morning and I said, I want to give this, like, this is what I love. This is what I know. This is what I live for. So that's it. Will it be like a online workshop or will it be like an in-person situation? Um, Yes, for now would be online, but I have like uh, individual sessions that you can come to my to my house and in my in my art studio we can paint, but just one on one because COVID and all that. And here in Lima is a big thing, so right, yes, super strict here in Lima. Mm -hmm. How has COVID affected your business and your life in general? Well, like a psychologist, it was wonderful I could help a lot of people I think a lot of people had this emotional crisis that emotional crisis are are also benef beneficial for for us to grow you know right so a lot of people start questioning themselves and what they were doing and they c came to therapy and I could help a lot of people more than I thought and well with art was a little bit slower at the beginning but then well in december a lot of people came visit my my stu my art studio or buy things through internet i made like this little online store as well so it's very beautiful because i have followers that are not from lima a lot of them are from province so i love to send art to other parts of peru it's beautiful awesome how did Peru uh, take COVID in general as a poorer country with less financial support to back the people who would lose their jobs. Uh, how did they react? How is their perception of the COVID? How are people treating it? Uh, uh, how do you observe it? You know, like mm. what, what's your perspective on it? Crazy. I don't know. At the beginning, everyone was really scared about it. Like. Everyone was very, no one was out of their homes. Like, we were locked down for real for months and months yes, and months. Yes, yes, like the main avenues, Lima is known, known for a lot of traffic, wasn't like in any cars, even like there were military policemen in the, in the highways, everywhere. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it was really scary even for me. At the beginning, then, I don't know, I'm kind of immune because I've been with a lot of people that had COVID and I never had anything. Well, uh, thank, thanks life, like no one in my family had it. And well, now I think things are getting more chill. Still, they say like in the media that there are a lot of people that are, there are no like, uh, I don't know, space in the, beds in the hospital but I, I think right stuff. now the numbers from what my dad has told me is there's 50 deaths a day which yeah. I think is very low in a country well this city has 10 million people yes and uh, so right 50 now I'm not so afraid and the people that I know like my friends my family are getting more like chill about it right some but of them had it so I don't know they are immune and like that Right. Do, do you think that the vaccine is coming here soon and do people want it? 
<laughs> are people are, are people thing. going with the flow of the vaccine or are some people resisting it or is it half half? I really don't want to have the vaccine, but I think there are some people that want it. There are no other people like I think it's a 50 50 something right. like that. Also, there is some questioning, not just they're really just doing what no. TV told them. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I myself don't want it neither, but I think it's kind of weird that they want to vaccinate the people who already had it, who built their immune system the natural way, the better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, many opinions on this on this subject matter that I'll stop it there to <laughs> not annoy people with per personal perspectives. But I always like to ask my guests to see what they think about, you know, because I think it's kind of like interesting to see everybody's perspectives and points of views. We find the, the truth in the middle of it all. Um, Sticking a little bit to, to politics, though, there was a big political situation in Lima just like a month or two ago where one president was knocked out and another corrupt president was placed in and everybody freaked out and went to the streets and in five days he had to resign because there were people dying in the streets. That's kind of like the summary of it, right? Did I get it right? Because yes. I was I was in here. You get it right. Okay, so tell me a little about that because you were out in the streets and I think you knew one of the people who died or? No, no, no. But I was very close to the thing. Uh, well, was how was the experience? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It was very intense. Like, I think, I don't know, people start waking up about uh, like political situation in Peru that has been like corrupt corrupt from, from, from years to years and years and still it is not a good system. But that was just like crossing the boundary, I think. It was just like, so mega corrupt yeah, that the corrupt so government uh, Congress would remove a president to bring in their homie to steal as much as they could. Yes, and they were doing some crazy laws about mining more without permission in the Amazon, like with like this um, kind of not legal university or university, Bamba universities, pseudo universities that they are, they own, so they were benefit, you know, so people would pay for a university that never gives you a true title and I don't know they start in, in one week they start having these law projects that were just insane so everyone just organized and said okay it's like that let's go out of the streets now who is everyone like they call it like the bicentenario generation that the youth is, is people that the, the young people that have access to internet you know so yeah for sure media was doing another thing uh, was covering up everything and even the the, the manifest manifest the protesters the protesters went to like the the tv channels to protest there also there was like a collective of visual artists that they were like making projections in the streets, in Parque Kennedy, in buildings, in the channels, like there were corrupt media wow. in the channel, you know. Projecting it on the walls yeah, of the, the channel. Yeah, I also like business. went with my projector with, with, with Colágeno. He made like an art with this president with the cachos and the devil's horns devil horns and we projected in like Parque Kennedy in the Burger King and in the Scotia Bank uh -huh. and I don't know just everyone was organizing themselves I had uh, I helped some friends that were medics with medicine and we were together because you the know? police were attacking the people very yes, hard because yeah? like the, the the process was really peaceful like I was there in center of Lima that was like the, the I don't know the heart the biggest uh, protest how many and people I don't know but I it was insane it was insane I never never ever saw that that much people together singing and they were just peaceful dancing they were even older people they were older people in their their homes with like safe democracy <laughs> it was it was amazing really I, I made I also my art I make two art 
pieces. I made collage in the street. And but the it, police were harsh back to those peaceful protesters, right? Yes, yes. The, the police didn't matter. And as we have that toque de queda, when it was curfew. like, I think, nine o'clock, they just throw throwing bombs. So the curfew people. was more because of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So they use a COVID curfew to exactly. start shooting at people. Exactly. And so like you're the can't protest anymore. You're, you're gonna yes, and people died. And a couple kids died, right? Yeah, and was like very sad. It was I don't know. I, th I I really felt emotionally unstable in those days because COVID, then an unstable government uh, president or situation and that people knowing that I don't know from from I had this thing in my in my mind about thinking that I wasn't in control of of my freedom I don't know it was was hard but at the end I think it was like also a consciousness shift as now I don't know I think young people are more interested in politics and they are observing you know? and they're proactive and they're, they're on the proactive they're observing and at the same time they're investigating there's not like oh, i don't know about it the no, media and the know. tv told me this so that's what i believe exactly now they know and we know i think that we are part of the system so we are part of the problem or we are part of solving the problem as well so was it super reassuring five days later your protest has happened and the president quits he's like sorry i can't be a president anymore of course he left with a lot of money but you know don't they all but was it like hey we won this battle did it feel good it felt good but at the same time it didn't because the the, the other like guys died in the embryon died so it was like nostalgic at the same time and i think we didn't want Totally, because I don't know, like, but we were fighting for also it's like the, the immunity, immuni immunity right. and I think it's like a big process. So to explain to our viewers, in Peru, the Congress has made it that the members of the Congress and the politicians cannot go to jail no matter what crime they do. So imagine if a president goes out with a machine gun and starts shooting out everybody because he's a president or because they're in Congress, they could never go to jail. That's called immunity in Peru. And everybody's like, what the fuck? These fucking politicians have made it that no matter what crimes they make, they can't be punished. And people are just like, what the fuck? These are the guys who are making all the crimes and they've made a law that they're immune. So that's total bullshit. And that's something that people are still trying to change, right? Yes, yes. Right. So, well, you started by getting out a very corrupt president. I think you should be proud of the work that you've done. I was very proud of Peru and the people of Peru. I was like, wow, Peru is being so fucked up and so corrupted for so long. But they went down to the streets and they made some degree of change. Like, I don't yes. see that happening in Canada. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but it's so confusing sometimes to see who's the good guy and the bad guy. Yes. It seemed like at least here it was clear who was the guy who just came in to steal 100 yes. percent. So, yeah, good for you. Good job for being out there in the streets. I'm proud of you and the other young people who went out there to, uh, you know, ask for things to change. And I hope things still change. I still hope that uh, immunity is removed. I hope Me it's too. more clear now and that things keep on moving forward. And why do all these people who come to governance always have to be criminals and thieves? It's, it's, it's the opposite of what should be happening. Well, anyways, <laughs> that's a, that's our political part of the show for today. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there, uh, but uh, let's go back to to art and spirituality, <laughs> which is this show is supposed to be about. Okay. So, Andrea, <sighs> tell me, what is the purpose of life? Living it. Living it. Ooh, good and simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you had to resume what your art is about. You know, it's hard to resume what your art's about because I'm sure every painting has its own meaning. But if somebody told you, like, hey, what's your art about? And, and they didn't know about your, you know, uh, shamanic journeys or your career. Like, what is your art trying to tell people? My, the purpose of my art is to generate consciousness. It's very clear for me that in multiple ways, through medicine, through nature, 
through knowing more, accepting yourself. Most of that, yes. Nice. Well, I think we're coming to the end of our show. Would you have some final words of wisdom for our viewers, maybe artists who are starting out their career during the COVID era, or maybe being artists in, in, in Lima, in Peru, or, or, or anybody at all who might be seeing this show today? Yes, that just follow your heart. I think that's the, the only path, the, the only truth, you know, like, follow the, the journey is inside and is inside your heart and no matter what people would say I think that it, it only matters what you think about and what you feel and that's it your right. own authenticity and expression will shine by their own <laughs> beautiful yeah just keep it real with yourself be authentic share your light and I will resonate with who it resonates and and it won't who it won't, and that's fine too, you exactly. know? Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> beautiful interview, beautiful conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to Chris Dyer's Creative Friends. I hope you had fun. Please support this channel. Please, uh, you know, comment and like and subscribe and share and all those beautiful things that helps us uh, have more people see these beautiful people I'm trying to share with you. So thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Blessings. Woo! His name is Joan Entes, known in the streets. Yes, sir. Zor, brother, how are you up, doing? He's a ghetto. Also, the most dangerous ghetto from Peru. <laughs> right. So the owner just said, like, here's a building you can turn into a museum, something like that, right? Yes, two floors. Two floors full of poo of this shit. Full. Man. You know? So we started cleaning all this shit. Uh, move the beers for other places, you know, like, <laughs> you know, okay. all the techniques because we try in the, the good way with, with some songs and stuff like that, but we need the guns. <laughs> At the end, you have to shoot a couple down. And when I done that part, I say, what happened with that deal? Now, I say, I have my friends and we do a museum. And the investor told me, what? You can do a museum? I said, for sure. Give me the money, I got that thing. And we do the museum. So make sure to subscribe, like, and everything else. Big thanks, and see you next week. Peace.